What makes a racing driver click? What gives them the speed? What gives them the ability? Overcoming the car below them and the weather above them. There's racing drivers everywhere, but what gives one driver the ability to be the best? There has to be a reason for Formula One greatness. Maybe it's in the brain, the blood, or maybe it's even in the DNA. I mean, it makes sense. Fathers and sons in Formula One. This type of stuff happens all the time. And maybe one of the most famous cases, being Carlos Sainz, one of the best rally drivers of all time. Is racing greatness in his DNA as well? It's time for Junior to prove it. Hello there guys and welcome, it is Niran here and today I am hugely excited to welcome you to F1 2015 career mode. My first episode, as you guys will now know, we are going to be racing with Carlos Sainz Jr. It's going to be an absolutely awesome career mode, I hope. I've tested this game out, it seems pretty good gameplay wise, there's a few fundamental flaws. But from the gameplay and visual sort of thing, it looks as if it's going to be absolutely awesome. So as you can see, we are obviously going to be starting at Melbourne. The Australian Grand Prix for Race 1 for Carlos's debut in this Formula 1 Championship. So it's going to be very exciting to see how he does. In the meantime, it's time for only one thing, and that is the qualifying report. After a dominant pre-season, it was no surprise to see a Mercedes top of the timing sheets, with Lewis Hamilton fastest from Nico Rosberg. Max Verstappen learned about qualifying the hard way as F1's youngest ever driver was eliminated in 17th. Q2 saw Nico Rosberg fastest on options from teammate Lewis Hamilton. Pastor Maldonado and Marcus Ericsson just missed out on Q3 at the expense of debutants Felipe Nasser and Carlos Sainz Jr. Nico Hülkenberg also showed good pace to make it into the shootout. But Q3 would see Lewis Hamilton take yet another pole from Nico Rosberg in the other Mercedes. Ferrari looked to have overhauled Williams, taking third and fourth, whilst Felipe Nasser and Carlos Sainz Jr. will start their first F1 races in ninth and tenth, respectively. So, reading up the grid from tenth position, it will be Carlos Sainz Jr. and Felipe Nasser on row five in tenth and ninth, with Felipe Massa and Nico Hulkenberg occupying row four. Daniel Ricciardo will be fifth from Valtteri Bottas in sixth, with the two Ferraris on row two, but it's Lewis Hamilton to take pole from his teammate Nico Rosberg in second. Hello and welcome from Albert Park, Australia, for today's race. And I think it's shaping up to be a classic. It's a great position for Lewis Hamilton to start the season from, and one that he'll be hoping he can capitalise on and turn into a race win today. Well, we all know that Lewis has raw speed, and if you give him a fast car, he'll win races. So if he can stay out front by the end of the first few corners, I'm sure he's going to be very difficult. It is time to go here for round one of the Carlos Sainz Jr. career mode. We start 10th on Carlos's debut just behind another debutant Felipe Nasa, and it looks like a pretty decent start for the Toro Rosso driver Nico Hülkenberg fainting out there looking to try and get up the inside of a Red Bull driver I think it was down into turn one we're up the inside of Felipe Nasa, the Brazilian after his second place in GP2 last season but getting massive amounts of oversteer here the World Series by Renault champion of last year and that's allowed Pastor Maldonado to get along the left hand side around the outside down towards turn three now heavy under braking Nasa manages to hold on to ninth place but it looks as if Science Junior it's going to lose out when he tries to go right around the outside over the sleeping policeman but Maldonado manages to hold on in the Lotus of Venezuela making it back up into the points but a good run here for Science Jr. down towards the next turn he thinks about a move up the inside as the Lotus sparks away under the floorboards but he's lost out in the end to pass the Maldonado one place dropped uh, Fernando Alonso his uh, fellow countryman is right behind Carlos Sainz at this moment in time it's perhaps a little bit of a disappointing start uh, really caused by the massive amount of oversteer 
on exit of turn two. It was a pretty good launch, actually, in the end, managing to get one on Felipe Nazar by the time they got into turn one. But Carlos Sainz Jr. will have to be... Uh, we'll have to settle for 11th place at the moment, although he's got a pretty decent exit here on Pastor Maldonado as we go into the final sector of this lap here around Melbourne and up the inside. Surely that's going to be a done deal move. Maldonado trying to hold it around the outside there. Big kick of oversteer again for Science Jr. on exit, but into this next right-hand corner, and he manages to keep hold of the position, and that is a good move for Science Jr. His first overtake in Formula 1, and it moves him up into 10th place. Moving a few laps later, and you can see Nico Rosberg here appears to be struggling. He's dropped behind the both of the Ferraris already, and he's coming into the pit lane. Now, I can only I can stress this is pretty much lap 3. I think you can see that by the fact the, the order is so tightly packed together. And into the pit lane he's coming now. I don't know why that is. He's sticking on another set of options, so it's no sort of change in strategy. It's given Carlos Sainz Jr. a position. I think it must be some sort of slow puncture for the German. Now moving on to lap four and Carlos Sainz Jr. is coming under a fairly decent amount of pressure from Maldonado. This is actually now for position nine as we go down into turn three. A little bit of contact there with Maldonado but what a move that is from the Venezuelan around the outside down into turn three. Fantastic stuff. It's now Marcus Ericsson behind these guys. He's promoted up into 11th having passed Fernando Alonso and with Nico Rosberg coming into the pit lane but a great run from Carlos Sainz Jr. on Maldonado and he lunges it back up the inside there in the slipstream. A bit squirmy under brakes there, the rear tyres, sort of losing a little bit of grip down into that corner, but it's a good move again from Carlos Sainz Jr. in this fantastic battle at the moment with Pastor Maldonado. Now moving on to lap seven, and it's time for Carlos Sainz Jr.'s first pit stop in Formula One. Now, obviously, you'll have seen earlier, we're going for a three-stop strategy, but it would appear as though the rest of the field may not be agreeing with that. Nico Hulkenberg's come in, and Maldonado obviously came in behind, so it's fair to say those guys are going to be on the same strategy as Carlos is at this moment in Time, sticking another set of option tyres on. Those should last until around about lap 14. And coming out of the pit lane now, uh, after his first pit stop in Formula 1, uh, Carlos Sainz Jr. will rejoin the track in 15th position, but that is Nico Rosberg there making a move on a few mana cars. Never thought I'd be saying that in this video, but Carlos Sainz Jr. managing to hold on in front of the Mercedes driver, who will, of course, have superior straight line speed and a big kick of DRS. Obviously, we're past lap three now, so the DRS is, of course, enabled. Rosberg trying to go right around the outside there into turn three, a similar move that Maldonado managed to pull off on Carlos Sainz Jr. a few laps ago. It all gets a little bit messy, a bit of contact there, but I think Rosberg is going to back out of it in the end. This is, of course, for position after Nico Rosberg was actually, you know, had to come in for what I can only assume is a slow puncture. That's why he was so slow on lap three. I actually thought that Rosberg was lapping Carlos Sainz Jr. at that point, but it turns out Rosberg was in fact down in 16th position. Now we move on to lap nine, and Sainz making one position up there as one of the cars coming into the pit lane, cutting that corner. Absolutely hideously though, Carlos Sainz Jr. He's got a lot to learn when it comes to exceeding track limits, but now down this second DRS straight, we're actually bearing down on a... Is that a Red Bull? Yeah, it is. It's Daniel Ricciardo. So the the man in, well, I suppose we're in the sister team car. Carlos Sainz Jr. has got a lot to prove. He wants to see if he can get into a Red Bull perhaps next season. He's going to try and go right around the outside of Daniel Ricciardo. And that is an absolutely beautiful move there through. I do believe that is turn six up into 13th for position. But we've got a few guys still to pit in front of us, as you can see, as we now move on to lap 10. And quite a lot of cars coming in there. Nazar, you could see, uh, you could just see coming out of the pit lane uh, on the exit. And we are now up into seventh place as so someone kicks some, some a bit of dirt up there in front of us. But now, onto lap 10 here, and we're actually gaining on Nico Hulkenberg. Hulkenberg's on the same strategy as we are, and Felipe Massa is on a two-stopper in the Williams, but we've lunged up the inside here of Nico Hulkenberg. Now, that is a brilliant move from Carlos Sainz Jr., who will now have the DRS uh, on Felipe Massa, but he, uh, he's got a bit out of shape there, and he hits the wall on the outside. Uh, Carlos Sainz Jr. clearly with a lot to learn about DRS as well there. Massive slide and it sent him into the wall. Very lucky not to lose any piece of front wing. He did, however, lose the position to Nico Hulkenberg. Meanwhile, Nico Hulkenberg's teammate Sergio Perez is in a massive accident after a collision with Pastor Maldonado. We're now about to see this from on board Fernando Alonso and somehow he manages to get out of the way of the Mexicans spinning and pirouetting through the middle of the track. A very crazy crash from, uh, from Perez after contact with Maldonado there. Uh, are coming through turn two, but now as you can see, rejoining the other force India, and he is about to be passed now by Carlos Sainz Jr., who we are on board with, but Sainz Jr. goes very, very wide. I think he'll just about hold on to the position. That is for position, and Carlos is now up into sixth place, but as you can see, he was trying to contact his radio engineer, perhaps getting a little bit distracted here on his debut, and he's gone wide. Nico Hulkenberg has managed to get back through, so a lot more work for Carlos Sainz Jr. to do to regain that sixth place back, but it's a pretty decent debut so far. As you can see, though, uh, Hulkenberg and Sainz Jr., 
have just come out of the pit lane. We're on board with Perez. Hulkenberg's gone wide. He's come back onto the racing line and spun bottom out. We're back on board now with Carlos Sainz Jr. Fresh out of the pit lane on a new set of boots. And up the inside he goes of the two Force Indias. Brilliant stuff there in the end. Fantastic move. Has to be said there. Getting the slipstream on Hulkenberg and passing the Force India driver as he was lapping his teammate. Now we're on board with Jensen Bond with a replay of the accident. Perez going wide, forcing Hulkenberg out wide. He comes back onto the racing line and hits Button, who then hits the wall and loses his front wing. So disaster for Jensen Button after Science Jr. and uh, Hulkenberg there came in for a pit stop. And now Science Jr. set his sights on the Sauber, the Swedish driver, Marcus Ericsson. It's a very clean move as Science Jr. obviously has to regain a whole pit stop on, the re on pretty much the rest of the field. Anyone who's on a two-stop strategy, and that includes Fernando Alonso in the McLaren as well. He currently holds 10th place. This is pretty much for position. Both of these guys with one pit stop left to go. Both of them needing to go onto the prime tyres, I do believe, or is Alonso on the prime tyres already? No, he's on the options as well, but it's an easy move there for Science Jr. and a difference in power units there, that one. Of course, McLaren with that very slow Honda uh, power unit at the moment, and Science Jr., even though he's with the Renault power unit, able to breeze past his fellow countrymen. Now onto lap 19, and you can see we are up into sixth place as Felipe is actually coming out of the pit lane on the prime tyres. It's a lovely switchback move coming out of the uh, coming out of turn two even. And it's fantastic driving from Carl Sainz Jr. that now sees him move up into fifth, and that is soon to become third, as I think as uh, Valtteri Bottas pits. So, no, only fourth, of course. Valtteri Bottas there coming into the pit lane. He's on a two stopper as well, is the Williams driver. And we now move up into fourth, there's Carlos Sainz Jr. And that becomes third as we go past Lewis Hamilton. So, not entirely sure what's gone on there for the Brits in the Mercedes. Didn't see him pulling over or any sort of accident or him in the pit lane. So, I'm not entirely sure how Sainz has managed to overtake Lewis Hamilton. But now into the pit lane for the final pit stop of the day. Day, and that is to move from the option tyres on to the prime tyres, the final pit stop of this race here on lap 21, exiting the pit lane or exiting the pit box now and driving down the pit lane. We've dropped to seventh place. Nico Hulkenberg, I think, came in behind us. He's, of course, on the same strategy, but we, uh, but we are now with Carlos Sainz Jr., in a net seventh position. So we've now got the rest of the race to try and catch up with everyone else on a fresher set of tyres. And that begins with the Brazilian Felipe Nasa in that Sauber. He just managed to lap the other Spaniard in this championship, Roberto Meri, in the Mana car. And now coming through this next right-hand corner, Science Jr. thinking of a move up the inside of Nasa, but decides against it. So we're now, I think, going to go for a DRS manoeuvre down the front straight. So this is actually outright for position. Felipe Nasa, could I just add, another debutant doing a very, very good job at the moment in that Sauber holding 6th place, but I'm not entirely sure how long that's going to last for. Carlos Sainz Jr. has got the DRS in the slipstream, going to the inside, down into Turn 1, and that is 6th place for the Spaniard. He goes past the Brazilian Felipe Nasa, who then goes wide into Turn 1, and the two debutants switch position, and now down that second DRS straight. It's uh, it's good it's good times for, uh, for Carlos Sainz Jr. at the moment. We've lost someone from this race, so that could have been Lewis Hamilton. Not entirely sure. We'll check at the end of the race, but on to the final lap now of Carlos Sainz Jr.'s debut in Australia, and it's looking as if it's going to be a very, very very solid sixth position. This is absolutely astonishing. We've got Daniel Ricciardo in front of us. He's a long way up the road because he was on that two-stop strategy. As you can see, they're going down into this right-hand corner. We've actually got a yellow flag in front of us, and that's because of this. Valtteri Bottas is trying to lap Will Stevens, and he's run straight into the back of the mana car and lost his entire front wing. Now, this the, the, the action may not be over here because if Carlos Sainz Jr. Can, can catch a very slow Valtteri Bottas here, we could take fifth. The green flags are now out. They can see the front wing to the left-hand side of the track. And it's Daniel Ricciardo. Then it's Felipe Massa now stuck behind uh, Valtteri Bottas in the other Williams. So we'll see if Bottas is travelling slow enough there. He's just checking uh, with the team radio there, Carlos Sainz, to see about the driver in front. Now back on board with Bottas as Massa uh, goes through. Bottas trying to get up the inside of the mana car, and he's got off again with contact with Will Stevens. Will Stevens is proving to be a thorn in the side of Valtteri Bottas at the moment. Here you can see Carl Sainz Jr. to the right-hand side, and he's just breezed past the front wingless Valtteri Bottas and Will Stevens, who's completely wrecked. Valtteri Bottas's race in general. He was in third place. He was on the podium on the final lap. Breaks his front wing on the back end of the manor. Through go Massa and Ricardo, And now with another incident. Science Jr. goes through as well. Who's really struggling with the tyres by the looks of things. Squirming under braking. Losing the back end there. And through the final corner, after a hugely dramatic last lap, it's going to be Carlos Sainz Jr. to come across the line to take a very, very solid 
fifth position behind Daniel Ricciardo and Valtteri Bottas, uh, sorry, not Valtteri Bottas, Felipe Massa, who took third and fourth. It was Sebastian Vettel who, wo who went on to win the race. But there you can see Sainz Jr. stepping out of that Toro Rosso and quite rightly, very, very happy with his day's work. As you can see, it was actually a 1-2 for Ferrari. Sebastian Vettel winning the race in front of teammate Kimi Raikkonen. Felipe Massa taking the final podium place in that Williams from Daniel Ricciardo and the sister car of Carl Sainz Jr. taking a very, very solid fifth from Bottas. Nasa there in, uh, in seventh. Uh, Verstappen, Sainz's teammate. We didn't see much of him during the race. He managed to get up to eighth in front of Kafiat and Hulkenberg and confirmation that neither of the Mercedes cars managed to get into the points because Nico Rosberg finished 14th and a lap down and Lewis Hamilton retired from the race. Sergio Perez the final finisher in 19th. But here you can see the driver standings. They're of course going to be the same as the race standings because we haven't had any races and have, we haven't had any other races of course yet. So Vettel leads the championship by seven points in front of Raikkonen, uh, Massa, Ricardo, and Carlos Sainz Jr. in fifth place after that incredible fifth place in the first, in his, in his debut, in his first race in Formula 1. Brilliant stuff from him. Now it's on to the Constructors' Championship. There you can see Mercedes down in seventh position on zero points. Who would have thought it? It's Ferrari with a 20-point lead from Williams at the moment in second in the Constructors' Championship from Red Bull and Toro Rosso in joint third and Sauber there in fifth. But I hope you've really enjoyed this first race of the Carlos Sainz Jr. career mode here on F1 2015 on Xbox One. Feel free to smash the like button if you did. Can we smash 60 likes for the first episode of this series? That would be absolutely absolutely awesome. Subscribe if you are new around here as well. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see a heck of a lot of F1 2015 content over the next few months because I'll be blitzing gameplays out like it's absolutely nobody's business. But subscribe if you want to see that. Comment about enjoying the video if you enjoyed it that much. It has been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a good day. Enjoy yourselves and goodbye.